to Panda News now, the most adorable news of them all. And pandas have had their status changed from endangered to vulnerable. And, not surprisingly, it's all thanks to porn. Pandas are cute and cuddly. But they no longer hold the key to their own survival. They're just not interested in sex. They just don't know what to do. So to teach them, they're showing some panda porn. We set up the TV just outside the bars and they watch. Pandas understand what it is, so often they go closer and sit with their eyes wide open. One person even more excited than the pandas was Carl Stefanovic. I'm really onto pandas at the moment. Love them. Yeah. Why wouldn't we you know that? Mm. <laughs> now, someone else who's excited, Kitty Flanagan. Kitty Flanagan, problem solver. Vulnerable pandas. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Problem solver. There, there's no problem, Kitty. They've, they've solved it. Pandas are no longer endangered. Disagree. Porn is never a solution, Chuck. Pandas might be having more sex now, but porn is not going to increase the numbers. No porn I've ever seen has the sperm going anywhere near where it needs to be <laughs> in order to make a baby. Not to mention the kind of pressure this is going to put on young panda females. Well, wait, so, what, you're, you're worried that young panda females will get unrealistic ideas about sex? Yeah, you can mock all you like, but yes, I am worried. I don't want lady pandas thinking they have to shave their fur to be attractive. <laughs> Plus, I think all this human intervention is going to create bigger problems down the track. Look at these researchers. They dress up in panda suits to fool the baby pandas. How dumb do they think they are? Surely the panda can smell the human inside the suit. Well, actually, Kitty, apparently they smear the outfits in panda dung and urine to help fool the babies. Yeah, OK, well, look at this picture. Now, sure, you might be fooling the baby panda, but in years to come that cub is going to need counselling to get over its traumatic childhood. Oh, I remember this one creepy uncle. Um, he, smelled, he smelled like a human covered in dung and he used to come in and put me in a storage box and then my mum and my sister both got into porn. And okay, just... okay, but, but Kitty, it's, it's working. Panda numbers are on the rise. 2,000 now at last count. Yeah, well, I want to see these 2,000 for myself and make sure they're not just counting scientists in panda suits. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're up to 2005 now. <laughs> Seriously, though, I think we're all overlooking the real problem. Uh, which is... Pandas have lost the will to live. How else do you explain why they've been trying to extinct themselves for millennia? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure extinct is not a, not a verb, but, but please, do go on. OK, look, pandas are carnivores. They're designed to eat meat, yet all they eat is bamboo, which has no nutrients. In order to survive on bamboo, they have to eat it all day, all day. They never stop. That's why they're exhausted. That's why they all have those dark circles under their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if pandas ate meat, they would look like this. <laughs> <laughs> they have so much energy. <laughs> Do you know what? I think pandas <laughs> like being endangered. Because in a weird way, being endangered is a form of self-preservation. Well, how so? Well, they live in China. They see what goes on. They probably realise that being on the endangered list was the only thing stopping them from ending up on the let's grind up its penis and take it as an aphrodisiac list. <laughs> right, but, but before you head off, which should be soon, uh, <laughs> do, do you have a solution for how to get pandas eating better? OK, well, it's like the old expression. Give a panda a fish, he'll eat for a day. But give a panda a fishing rod and he'll probably eat that too because it looks like bamboo. <laughs> and that is your problem. <laughs> What, who's, who's problem? Pandas. They're addicted to bamboo. That's what we need to solve, this insane bamboo addiction. At the moment, you can't walk down the street in China without a panda coming up to you saying, Hi, mate. Have you got two bucks for the train to Guangzhou? <laughs> so we need to get these kids off the boo. We've got to get them off the bam bam. The bam -a. Get them off the chew, the chaff stick. The chow, chow. No more. Come on. Right. Well, I mean, you know. Done. So, all right, I. I <laughs> all right, I, I, <laughs> all right so, so I get it. So, how are you going to do it, Kitty? How are you going to how are you going to break that addiction? Okay. Well, I'm fundraising for panda detox centres. Um, I've also asked that sugar woman to do an I Quit Bamboo book. Right. Um, which I think. Be nice. I'm, I'm trialling bamboo patches. Uh, that's bamboo abate for pandas really struggling with cravings. <laughs> and then once the pandas are clean, 
we bring in Jamie Oliver to get them excited about real food again. <laughs> Forget porn, it all starts with good food. I mean, maybe, just maybe, if the man panda cooked the lady panda a really nice meal every once in a while, she would want to have sex with him. Kitty, are we still talking about pandas? <laughs>